Hello everyone and welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. So tonight I'm going on a night out, but I don't need to leave for another hour. So I kind of got this weird bit of time with nothing to do. And so I thought we should do some quizzes because I want to know <laughs> which book character I am most like. Because I had a writing class last week and the icebreaker at the beginning was to say which literary character you most related to. And I have my answers, but I was like, I've never done a quiz online to see what other people would say. And when I was thinking of what I should do with my time, I thought that's it. That's exactly it. That's what I should do with my time <laughs> today. The alternative was basically I have this air fryer. <laughs> I have this air fryer that I've never used. It came with the apartment. I am terrified of it because I just feel like everything's gonna go wrong. I, I don't know why. I just feel like I cannot, I will not be able to use the air fryer. I, I feel like I'll blow up the apartment. And so earlier today, I thought, you know what? Tonight is the night. I have some free time. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna learn how to use the air fryer. I watched a bunch of tutorials. I invested in this. And then I got my tote bag and I'm walking down the street on my way to the supermarket, like on my way to Trader Joe's to get my supplies. Like I was gonna make um, a salmon thing. And then halfway to Trader Joe's, I walked past McDonald's. <laughs> and I just thought, fuck it. Like I'm, Life is too short. I'm not learning to use the air fryer today. I'm just gonna get McDonald's and call it a day. And so, in the spirit of pre-drinking, there is vodka in my Fanta. So, this could be fun. I actually feel like it might be quite a humbling experience for me because, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I want it to tell me I'm like Connell from Normal People or like Joe March from Little Women. And I feel like it's gonna be like your Voldemort. <laughs> your Voldemort, mate. Or like John Thorpe from Northanger Abbey, who's like the worst character ever. I just feel like it's gonna be someone's shit and it's gonna hurt my feelings. So, uh, let's dive into that, shall we? Sometimes the world needs to humble you and this is me doing it in public. So let's see, hopefully the screen recording. Okay, so these are the first ones that came up on Google. I think I'm gonna try the top three and see what they say. So which famous book character are you? This is by Playbuzz. I am loving the 2014 Tumblr energy. This picture is absolutely radiating. Who are you in the book world? Let's start. Male or female? I actually think that's none of your business. You witness a bullying scene in the hallway. You would wait, devise a plan, help or not to help. Inform a teacher or disciplinary officer. Gather all your friends, then fight the bully. Stop that. Walk towards the bully and say, hey man, you look like a smelly minotaur then run for your life. Well, at least we know the results are going to be incredibly accurate. <laughs> Do you know, I'm not a fighter. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not a gather all your friends and fight the bully. I'm just not that guy. Wow, American chicken nuggets really don't taste as good as British ones. Hmm, not as disappointing. The first one I kind of get because it's like indecisive, but I might go for the final one just because it's like using your words and I feel like I'm more of a like, a talker. I'm like, hey, let's like, let's not do this. So maybe that's stop that then, actually, rather than running for your life. I think, mm, I don't think smelly would be my first. Okay, let's just go with stop that. On a Saturday, we'll find you with my special someone, going out with friends, hiking, hunting, anything outdoors, playing piano or other instruments slash singing. Well, we know it's not that one since I am tone deaf. Um, <laughs> reading my favorite book, drawing or painting, being artistic. This is so... I'm not like other people vibes for me, but I'm I'm probably gonna put reading my favorite book, right? It's between like going out with friends and reading a book. Um, it's a Saturday though. So maybe I'll put going out with friends because I, I probably would like go out and read on a weekday. <laughs> this is the kind of thing where you start questioning yourself. Like who, what, who even am I? I don't know. Pick your style. Um, interesting. I think maybe I'm that top left one, you know? Yeah. I think I am that top left one. Your friend betrays you. What you gonna do? Cry for a while, never forgive them. Do not talk with them ever. They won't betray me. Forgive, but do not trust again. Prepare for revenge. Okay, Taylor Swift, did you write this? Talk it out to them. Nothing, revenge is for the weak. Okay, like I said, I'm a talker. I think it's gonna be talk it out to them. I'm like, let's get to the bottom of this. We're adults, why? I don't really, I don't fall out with people. That's not a thing that I do. I, I, I don't have energy. At this big age, no, no, no. Unless you're like a terrible, awful person. Like unless you've done something that like harms people. I'm more of a like silently remove myself than be like aggressively angry at you, you know? Just chill vibes, life's too short, you know? Which color appeals to you most? Green, others, violet, blue, black, white, or yellow? Uh, hmm. 
See, I'm an orange boy. Like, orange. I love orange. I don't wear orange because it doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> but I love the colour orange. Like, I'm really drawn to like warm colours, hence my red on <laughs> my sweater. So I guess I, I will probably pick yellow, even though I no, don't know if I would include yellow in that. I really don't think it needs to be overthought as much as I'm overthinking it. <laughs> Let's go with yellow. Sure. Whose favourite colour is yellow? Why did I pick that? Oh well. <laughs> we'll see. Pick your weapon. No no to violence. Oh, this one, look. My words. I'll go with that. Sure. Pick an element. Always fire. 100%. Your worst nightmare is something unknown, hurting everyone, suffocation or drowning, being powerless, being alone, having my loved ones hurt or killed. Fear itself. Absolutely having my loved ones hell killed. Woo, playbots, you're asking the deep questions here. They are giving you an encouragement pillow. Who is they and why are they doing that? <laughs> what, did I ask? <laughs> why would I want that? Anyway, they're giving me an encouragement pillow. The words, ro oh, the words written on it will be, sometimes crying or laughing are the only options left and laughing feels better right now. God. You don't get to choose if you get hurt in this world, but you do have some say in who hurts you. I like my choices. Oh, they all gonna be this cringy. I love you and I will love you until I die. And if there is life after that, I'll love you then. Damn. If you ain't scared, you ain't human. Well, we know it's not gonna be that one. <laughs> Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. One can never help being born into perfection. Well, it's not that. We're staying together. You're not getting away from me. Never again. That's giving possessive serial killer energy. Hope is stronger than fear. Hmm. Okay, right. I'm torn between the happiness one or the one about laughing. Like, ugh, it makes me want to rip my tongue out to say these words, but I'm gonna go for that one. It was a bit live, laugh, love, but sometimes it's gotta be done. Do you know what I'm saying? You want someone who is responsible, rebel for a cause, always there for you, calm and humorous, gentle yet authorized, supportive, positive thinker, smart and cunning. <sighs> Okay, positive thinker, maybe? Responsible, no. Rebel, no. Always there for you. Well, that's sweet, but no. <laughs> like, I need some space. Like, don't be always there, <laughs> you know? Calm and humorous, that's, that's sweet. Gentle and authorized, not interested. Supportive, positive thinker, smart and cunning. I don't like the word cunning. Uh, hmm, okay. Let's go with, yeah, like, chill vibes, but you can have a laugh. What more could you want, really? It is better to live one day as a lion than a thousand days as a lamb. I is it? I think I'd rather live a thousand days. I, I, like, it would be cool to be a lion for only one day, but I don't know if I agree with the sentiment. <laughs> You'd rather live for one day left than... What does this mean? Have a mortal enemy, see your family hurt and die, lose your memories forever, nothing, I wouldn't want to die because it will hurt everyone around me, I'm a grenade. Oh my god, that's giving... Um, the four and our stars. Have your lover choose someone over you. <sighs> Been there, babe. <laughs> have everyone around you in comatose. Be kept inside walls forever. Have a friend or family betray me. Uh, where's the none of the above option? <laughs> I don't know about this. See your family hurt and die is really awful. I, I guess I'm gonna pick that, right? Surely, okay, last... You want to be no one, seriously. Oh my god, I, I kind of hate this. <laughs> Thomas, Jacob Black, Jace Whalen, Gail Hawthorne, Maxon Shreve, Augustus Waters. Okay, we're giving, that's giving heartthrob. Candice Everdeen, Tris Pryor, Clary Frey, Annabeth Chase, Hermione Granger, Clary Frey again. We really want to be her, apparently. America Singer, Bella Swan, Lena Hathaway, Juliet Capulet, Theresa Gray. Okay, I see what they're doing here with like the kind of character archetypes though. Cause then you have like Albus Dumbledore, Haymitch, Aslan, Chiron. So those are kind of like the, um, the guardian slash like advisor figure. Hello, annoyingly my camera kind of cut out here. Um, once I've been recording for a certain amount of time, it just cuts and I didn't notice until just afterwards. So I wasn't sure like how much it kept in, but this was the final question. And I ended up choosing the one that was like Katniss, and Hermione Granger and stuff, because I just thought out of all of the options, this one I guess was like the critical analytical thinker. And I think that's probably 
where I sit, I don't know. I was like, well, I'm not like a Harry Potter. I don't think I'm like the hero. So I was like, I'll go with like the, the thinker. I'll go with the one who's like <laughs> an overthinker. That'll be me. Anyway, the next clip is me like getting the results. Am I about to be so offended? Well, it's taking its sweet time. <laughs> it is taking its sweet time. Katniss Everdeen. Well, I just told you that. So it just gives you one of the ones that you said? You are strong, independent, survivalist, who is good at thinking outside the box. I have a brand called Ink Outside the Box, so maybe you are usually very logical and rarely let your emotion get in the way. Although you were cold, sarcastic, and cynical, and not good at making friends, when you have one, that, that, that's a bit mean. When you have one, you are there to protect them no matter what. Way to go, girl on fire. <laughs> well, I didn't expect this to tell me that I have difficulty making friends. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Maybe we'll see what the next one says. Okay, this is which classic character are you from Penguin Random House? You lend one of your favorite books to a friend. Okay, this is more my kind of quiz. It is returned with a cracked spine, dog-eared pages, and chicken-scratched marginalia. Do you address the issue? Um, no, who cares? What's one book between old friends? No, I wouldn't say a thing, but I'll be annoyed about it for the rest of the day. Yes, I would express my disappointment right away in a calm manner. Yes, I would use humor to ease any tension. Ooh, that might be me. Faulty premise, you're presuming I would lend a book to anyone. Oh, that might be me. Now the thing is, I am a dog era. I crack the spine. I don't mind any of this when I do it. Like I do that to my own books because I like to have a record of me reading them. And I kind of like when a book feels loved. I also don't mind buying secondhand books that have those qualities. So I, instead of lending books, I usually buy someone their own copy. So maybe I'm, Maybe I'm the bottom one. I'm either that first one or the last one. I'm gonna do this because I do lend books. So yeah, I think that's how I feel. Your favorite living author walks past you on the sidewalk. How do you react? I say, Sally Rooney, I am obsessed with you. I would limit myself to a quick wave and a smile. Mm, no, because uh, how would they know? I keep on walking because that is how I would like to be treated. I disagree because when you guys watch me in public, it's the best thing ever and we always have a really good chat, so please always say hi. <laughs> I would shake their hand, say I enjoy your work and go on with my day. I'd politely ask for a photo and an autograph, no. Why would I even stop? I don't care about the author, I care about the work. This is interesting because I don't know if I would recognize many of my favorite authors like if I saw them out on the street because we spend a lot of time with their words but not necessarily a lot of time looking at them. Like I think Sally Rooney could easily have walked past me and I know full well what she looks like but, um, yeah, I just, I don't think I would necessarily recognize her, I think. Unless I heard her talk, maybe. I think for me it's this one. I think that's what I would do. I'm not necessarily saying I would shake their hand. I just think I would like to express my appreciation for them. Inexplicably, your favorite dead author walks past you on the sidewalk. I, in which case, would run. Why is there a zombie author? on the street. I would engage them in conversation because I don't see a downside. I would follow the author respectfully to find out how they are here. This is very meta. <laughs> I would see if they needed anything since being dislocated in time would be difficult. I would leave them alone as nothing good can come from being curious. I would share my love for their work and say how good they look for their age. Kind of, kind of true. I think that's what I would do. Best believe I'm not following a dead person. I don't want to know where they came from. I would want to say hi and I do love a compliment. I feel like if you think something, you should always say it. If you feel no, you want to compliment someone, you always should, um, when appropriate, obviously, um, and when it's not weird. But um, yeah, I think the bottom one is how I feel. You absentmindedly open a package that was addressed to your neighbor and discover a highly sought after first edition. Do you return the package? Yes, I would return the package with a note of explanation and a bottle of wine. Why are we giving them wine? They already get the book. Why are we giving them wine? I'd return the package to them and I would buy myself a bottle of wine. Is that an option? I would return the package and explain the misunderstanding in person. I would repackage the book and leave the box on their doorstep. I would return the package along with an invitation to talk it out over tea. 
book club vibes. That's it. That's the one. Why would you? That would be so awful if you kept that. I'm just not that dude. I'm not that guy. Um, not only did you forget the book club is at your house, you didn't even read the book. What do you do? I wouldn't admit I hadn't read it, but my book club probably will not notice. I'd be upfront about it and would focus on making everyone comfortable. I would piece together the plot based on the book club discussion. I would accuse another member of not reading it before people suspect me. I would admit my error. If there are others like me, I'd schedule a breakout session. I like that idea. That's really fun because then you can like talk about why you didn't read it, why you didn't get around to reading it, and like maybe first impressions. Um, because you could like sit and read maybe the opening together. I like that. I think that's a good idea. The didn't read the book book club. I like it. Your best friend reveals that they wrote a novel. You're the first to read it and you hate it. How do you respond? I tried to solve this conflict by focusing my praise on my friend's dedication. I'd ask if they'd like my help. If so, I'd offer critiques. If not, I'd let it go. I'd express my excitement and focus on the importance of editing. I tell them how much I loved their book. I'm still their biggest fan. I'd be honest and enjoy watching hope drain from their eyes. Freaking hell, who are these people? Who is pressing that? Damn. Um, I feel like the fairest thing is to share your feedback, right? That's why they asked you to read it. That's why you're the first to read it. Like it's not published yet, They're, they can still fix things. And you know, you can just give them, yeah, I think I would be like, hey, do you want my honest opinion? Let's chat about it. And it coming from a place of love, right? They're your friend. I kind of like this one too, like express excitement and then focus on where they can edit it. Maybe that's more me. Because I don't think I'd be like, oh, <laughs> do you need my help? Like, that's kind of what that one implies. I think I'd, yeah, I'd be like more super excited for them and pumped that they created a book. Like, that's huge. And then be like, okay, now let's talk about how we can think about edits. Because that's fun too. The editing process is really fun. You discover that a family member has been stealing books from the library. They inform you that they are only taking books that haven't been checked out recently. How do you react? Why would you ever need to steal books from a library? It's the whole point is to borrow books. As long as no one is reading them, I have them grab a couple for me. Ooh. I would insist that they return the books in person. No ifs and no buts. I'd express my disappointment and have them promise to not do it again. I would convince them that they have a moral duty to return the books. I'd persuade them to make an anonymous donation to the library for double the value. I think it's like a moral duty to return them. Like. If you've done it, read them and then return them, right? Why are we stealing books from a library? Like, you, you can get a library card, they're free. I got my New York library card this morning, in fact, and I went to a lovely library and it just reminded me how great <laughs> public libraries are. Your favorite novel is being adapted for film. The film's director says he made plot changes, oh hell, that will make the story more accessible to a new audience. Oh, how do you feel? Even if I were irritated, I'd still admit that this is a sensible approach. I'd hope the film would inspire others to read the book for themselves. The prospect would personally gull me, but I'd keep this feeling to myself. I wouldn't pass judgment and hold out hope that the adaptation is excellent. Hmm. I think that, hmm. I watched my policeman quite recently and they took out a scene, which I was, I thought that it was correct to remove that scene in the context of the film. So I was like irritated, no. I wouldn't pass judgment and hold out hope that the adaptation is excellent. If it's making it more accessible, then yeah, right? Like accessibility is key, so, and like adjusting things to make everyone feel comfortable. Yeah, for sure. You open an email and realize that it's not for you. The manuscript for the year's most hotly anticipated novel is attached. Assuming you will experience no repercussions, what do you do? Probably make a YouTube video on it, let's be honest. I won't leak it, but I'll still put out feelers in case I can make money from it. Oh my God, no. I would immediately respond and let the sender know I didn't open the attachment. I would read the manuscript out of curiosity, but would not tell anyone. I would neither read nor share because I'm not interested. Okay, it's definitely this one. I would read the manuscript out of curiosity, 100%. Shut up, sign up for news from Penguin Random House and receive your quiz results. I have to sign up? That's criminal, that's criminal. I'm Rosalind. <laughs> I'm Rosalind. As in like, from Shakespeare. Like, from, from, yeah, from As You Like It. Okay, sure. People are drawn to you because you radiate authenticity. Although you have a striking intelligence, you don't alienate others with your intellect. Instead, your warmth counterbalances your cleverness making you the ideal dinner party guest. Do you know, that is actually the ultimate compliment, to be the ideal dinner party guest. I kind of love that. You have a gift for communicating with people different than you because you can adapt your style of reasoning to best resonate with your audience. Ooh, this is kind of 
This is kind of true. Despite this easygoing nature, your patience isn't limitless. Because you are a good judge of character, you don't suffer fools easily. Combined with your ability to quickly discern the motivation that drive others, you've learned to value integrity above all things. What does Penguin Random House know that I don't? This actually <laughs> was a read. Like that, I kind of, I kind of relate to that. Well, I'm shook. That is crazy. That was, okay. Well, I guess I'm Rosalind then. Welcome to Rosalind in the books. I think that I'm gonna wrap this video up here because this took a little while to go through all the questions. So maybe I'll do a part two to this next time I'm kind of killing some time with a vodka Fanta and some chicken nuggets, which I'm not gonna lie, are really not the same as the UK ones. How interesting is that? All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.